Hello friends, let's continue with this practical for fetching the records as well as to update the records. Now before going for the fetching of a record, we need to understand some of the key concepts about collections. Now what are these collections? So collections are nothing but they are specialized classes for data storage and retrieval. Now collection classes serves various purposes such as uh, allocating memory but should be dynamically. Then it accesses the list of items. on the basis of an index. So this is the collection. Now <clears throat> we need to see another concept that is concept of array list. So we know what is an array. Like array is a collection of a homogeneous elements. So here array list is again an ordered list of collection of an object. But here the difference between array list and array is that we can allocate the memory for an object dynamically. Now, like an array, we can add or remove items from the list and the array resizes itself automatically. Now, the another important concept that you have to use is enumerable. Now, it is first of all an interface that facilitates It facilitates the use of for each statement. To iterate through a set of data. So these concepts we have to see before fetching a record. So let's continue with the practical. Now here let's come back to the DLL where we have an employee class where we have written insert function in the previous practical as well as we have written the delete employee function. I'll add a function for fetching the record. So public. I'll give the data type array list. Now this array list will come only when when you are importing this system dot collection package or you can see the namespace. Then only you'll find this array list. Now public array list will give the name fetch employee. Now for fetching a specific employee we need to have AMP ID. I'll begin with try catch block. Now let's take some 
variables then array list then we require SQL data reader now this data reader object we need to uh, we need to just if you want to fetch some record from the database we require this data reader so I'm just declaring this to variables now just call this get connection now we have cmd equals to new SQL command where we can call the procedure so initially we haven't created the procedure so I'll give this name for the procedure as fetch employ and pass the connection object then cmd dot command type command text equals to command type dot store procedure then <coughs> sorry uh, then be command type then we can have a parameter cmd dot parameters dot add let's give the procedure parameter as emp employee id its data type b scale db type dot integer dot value equals to the parameter that we are passing its employee ID. then we require only one parameter for this fetching of record now we require to open the connection first so con dot open the connection then dr equals to now here we are using method execute reader of a command object now we can just fetch the record by using while loop while dr dot read dr dot read just use instantiate your array list and add the elements in the array list so add the data that we are fetching from the data reader so it will be let's say d is a two string so this dr of zeros means whatever the column that we are fetching through the query that will be the index number like if like if we are fetching the record select emp name from the table so this emp name means it's a zeroth index or the first column in that particular query this is over uh, now just close all the connections like dr.close con.close and just return the things like uh, yeah I'm returning AR now here I'll set AR equals to NAR if it throws an exception we'll assign the NAR value over here now this is my fetch employee function and the next thing is you can also write an update function so update function will be similar to like let's say we have a delete employee function I'm just copying this code and paste it here. This is our next function. I'll change it to update employee. But here we need to pass both the parameters. So this will be employee name. So I'm creating the procedure with update employee. And I require one more parameter. And that could be employee name state type should be where care should be employee name and 
will change it to update data. So this is my update function also. So all these functions are ready in the DLL. Just build that DLL. So build is successfully completed. Now the next step is we need to create the procedures. Let's create the procedure for fetching the record. Create procedure sp fetch employ pass the parameter. Just give the parameter employ ID. Let's say type as numeric. begin select employee name from employee where emp id equals to threat employee id Let's execute this procedure. So your command is executed successfully. Similarly, create the procedure for update employee. But here we require two parameters at the rate employee name where care is 50. Now here query will be changed to update employee. Set employee name equals to at the rate employee name where employee ID equals to at the rate employee ID. So this is my update procedure executed. So this name should be same as that the name that we are given in your DLL. This procedure is ready and let's verify whether you have some records in your database. So we have a couple of records here. Let's execute this. Now before that, I'll need to create a web page also. So I'm adding one web form. Let's give the name as employee search update. So we are performing both the things in the same application. This is a form. So let's uh, design the form. I'm using the same design layout of let's say this one. Just copying the same content of an inset. So here I have EMP ID, EMP name and uh, let's change the name here to search VTN search. We'll take one more button here in the same. Let's give the button name as VTN. And one more thing we can do here in the DLL uh, after updating the employee we can also call the function fetch employee with the parameter emp id so that it will immediately show you the updated employee name so this we have added in the update employee of your DLL now coming back to your sp.net page we have this, let's see the design view, we have this design. 
So just double click on this search button. Now here we need to import a namespace using system dot collection and as well as using employee DLE that we have given the reference in the previous practical. So here we have added the reference. Now the next thing is let's create the object of that particular class in the DLL. So I'm creating the object equals to new employee. Now we require array list as the return type of that method, fish method is in array list. So here in order to get that elements from an array list, I'm using enumerable. So just I'm giving enumerable as initializing as null. Now here on search, let's call ar equals to obj dot fetch employees. Now here I'm passing the parameter the text box value convert dot to to integer the first text box value txt dot text. Now once you are calling this method with the parameter text box value it will be uh, went to that particular DLL and it will take the data from the procedure and it will return that entire object into AR. Now let's uh, check if AR is not equals to null then we need to just fetch that record from AR into a second text box equals to obj1 dot let's make it a two string so whatever the name of that particular employee will be fetched into that text box else just display on the label sorry no records this is my fetch function we are calling the fetch function now same case for the update let's come back to the update button let's double click and you can just normally call as it's a different type of string so I'll build string and I'll build dot text equals to obj dot update employee but here we need to pass two parameters txt employee id first text box value and second text box value So on the update button we are calling the update function. Now let's execute our page. Let's see the result. Green browser. Let's search the MP101. Search. So you have this employee name. I'm just updating with the name. Let's say key dot sync. Let's update it. So you'll see this is successfully updated and the record is updated. If you want to see in the database, let's go in the database. Let's execute this, we will find the updated record. So that's it. Thank you.